So I want to talk to you guys about pagan gods and how people began to worship these deities. When people talk about ancient mythology, uh, they usually will speak of the gods of antiquity as if people just conceived of these deities in their own heads and just arbitrarily began to worship them or uh, they made cults revolving around these deities just because they thought about them or maybe because they heard the roars of thunder for the first times in their lives and they were so in awe and they were so filled with fear over it that they began to worship uh, thunder and they made a deity um, revolving around thunder, called them Thor or called them pick your god from whichever ancient culture. Uh, or maybe people saw the sun and they noticed that crops grew under the sunlight and without the sunlight they would starve uh, or they would freeze to death so they began to worship the sun and they built a mythology around the sun and in which they put in different characters or they gave the sun a name and they made up a story about this deity that represented the sun things like that but i have never really heard anyone in our own present era uh, who speaks about these ancient gods as if they were actually, at one point in time, human beings. Um, no one ever brings that up. No one ever talks about or even suggests how these ancient deities could have been actually humans at one point in time. Humans who were so famous that People made cults around them. And I believe that these deities from antiquity were merely human beings who were considered heroic. They were considered to be heroes. And they were so revered while they were alive that after they died, they were still revered, but this time as gods. Um, Hercules was a human being at one point in time. Hercules was... An ancient hero he controlled territory he took tribute from his subjects he was a warlord and after he died people made uh, a cult uh, around him and they worshiped him and that was the origin of the cult of hercules odin if you read the prose Edda, uh, was a very prestigious and powerful tribal leader who had lots of property in the Caucasus. And according to the Prozida, he migrated uh, all the way up to Northern Europe and uh, he settled in Germany for a little bit. And then he went up to Scandinavia where he conquered the native population there or the population that was living before him. Thus began the cult of Odin. And they made sacrifices to him and they uh, formed an entire mythology. They built an entire mythology on this person that they revered so much. Um, the cult of Julius Caesar. There was a cult of Julius Caesar. Um, after Julius Caesar was murdered, uh, his adopted son, um, Octavius, who would later be known as Augustus, he organized... Um, uh, ritual games or funeral games in honor of Julius Caesar. And um, as these games went on for days, uh, there was a comet that was seen flying uh, across the sky. And this comet was seen for several days straight. And people were so awestruck by it that they thought, wow, what what's this comet? Like, what does it mean? What does it represent? And Augustus said, that is the soul of my father, Julius Caesar. And thus began a cosmic or astral cult of Julius Caesar. And Caesar Augustus would build a gigantic temple in honor of his father. <clears throat> and on, his, on this uh, temple would be engraved a giant image of Julius Caesar with a comet. That was the cult of Julius Caesar. The pharaohs were all worshipped, and they were considered gods after they died. The Egyptians considered them to be gods after they deceased. 
So if the pharaohs had cults uh, dedicated to them after their deaths, then I think it's quite um, logical to then uh, conclude that the gods of the Egyptian pantheon, Osiris, etc., were also at one point in time kings or people of great prestige or fame. Um, so, for example, Osiris was considered a king by the ancient Egyptians. He was considered to be at one point in time a human king who was so famous that after he died, they considered him to be a god. And when you read about how the pharaohs were deified, what you're actually reading is simply the the origin of the of the pantheon of Egypt in real time. That's what you're seeing. So you're seeing, okay, the pharaoh was considered a god. He died. He was still considered to be a god. The same thing happened to Osiris. Um, very interesting. I was reading, and this is what got me to do this video today. I was reading uh, Thucydides today. Very fascinating. And it talks about this... Um, it talks about this Spartan king. His name was Pleistoanax. And Pleistoanax... He uh, was accused of, um, because at one point in time, he was uh, not the king of Sparta. And he wanted to be brought back to the throne. So to convince people to reinstate him back into the kingdom, he... Uh, and this was an accusation lodged against him, but whether it's true or not is not the point. The accusation lodged against him was that he bribed um, a prophet, a prophetess of Delphi, to tell the people that the gods are upset that this guy wasn't the king and that he needed to be brought back to the throne or else the gods would curse Sparta with a, um, a famine or some kind of natural disaster. So Thucydides says, and the way that he writes this is why I'm bringing the subject up. It says here that the accusation was that he and his brother Aristocles had bribed the prophetess of Delphi to tell the repeated Lacedaemonian deputations that they must bring home the seed of the demigod son of Zeus from abroad, else they would have to plow with a silver share. Look at the wording here. They must bring home the seed of the demigod son of Zeus. The demigod son of Zeus was Hercules. And in this sentence, Pleistoanax, in the capacity as king of Sparta, is here referred to as the seed of Hercules. So he was considered to be the seed of a god. He was the seed of Hercules, who was the son of Zeus, and by extension, he would be the seed of Zeus. So my cat is... Not right now, sweetie, okay? So by extension, he was the son of Zeus. So the king was of a divine origin. And it reminded me of the Japanese. The Japanese believed that, and they are Japanese nationalists who probably still believe this, they believed that the emperor was the descendant of the sun goddess, um, Amat Ersu. Or the Incans, they believed that their kings, their royal family, was descended from the sun god. Um, and then you have the Egyptians who believed that their royal family was also um, of a direct divine lineage from the sun god Amun-Ra. So <laughs> you find this pattern here, which really, which really leads me to believe that all of these ancient pagan religions, they all came from the same type of deception, and that was the cult of people, people worshiping men, be they royalty or be they warlords or be they heroes, and forming entire cults around them and those cults becoming 
entire imperial religions, entire state religions. Just looking at, I mean, just, it, it was only decades ago, uh, over seven decades ago, that the Japanese were literally murdering millions of people in honor of their emperor. Um, so paganism truly, at the end of the day, leads to tyranny. Thucydides also talks about the formation of a hero cult revolving around a Spartan military commander named Brasidas. And Brasidas, uh, he defended this place called Amphipolis uh, from the Athenians, and he defeated the Athenians. And this was the battle of um, Amphipolis would be one of the major battles in the Peloponnesian War that would shift the victory to the Spartans. And it talks about how the Amphipolitans, after the Spartans defeated the Athenians, they actually began to worship this Spartan commander, Brasidas. And it says here that they, the Amphipolitans, constituted him, Brasidas, the founder of their colony, and pulled down the buildings of Hagnon. Hagnon was the Athenian who led the original colony in Amphipolis. And they obliterated everything that could be interpreted as a memorial of his having founded the place they regarded Brasidas as their savior. So in this one line, you're seeing the formation of a hero cult, and you're seeing really a microcosm of how all of these ancient religions formed, be they the worship of Odin or the worship of Osiris or the worship of some um, of Zeus or whichever ancient deity. I would say that most of these ancient deities were people who were worshipped. In fact, the Bible actually talks about the origins of paganism in the Book of Wisdom. Once there was a father who was overwhelmed with grief at the uh, untimely death of his child, so he made an image of that child who had been suddenly taken from him. He then honored a dead human being as a god and handed on secret rituals and ceremonies to those who were under his authority. So here we see how paganism originated as the cult of a deceased human and how it began to uh, become enforced in society by a powerful person. Um, as time went on, this ungodly custom became stronger. Finally, it became law and idols were being worshipped at the command of powerful rulers. So now it becomes... Uh, a widespread state religion enforced by governments. When people lived too far away to honor a ruler in his presence, but were eager to pay honor to, to this absent king, they would imagine what he must look like and would then make a likeness of him. The ambitious artist who made these likenesses caused the worship to spread. Even among people who did not know the king, an artist might want to please some ruler, and so he would use his skill to make the likeness better looking than the actual person. Then people would be so attracted by the work of art that the one whom they had earlier honored now became the object of their worship. So all this became a deadly trap because people who were grieving or under royal authority would later would take objects of stone or wood and give them the honor reserved for the one God. So paganism began as the worship of humans, and these deities worshipped in ancient times, um, these were simply deified humans, be they kings or heroes or people of prestige, people of power. So paganism was designed as a religion of political power, and it was done in a way to guarantee and enforce um, the worship of the state. So ultimately, all paganism leads to tyranny. All, all paganism leads to the worship of government. Because in the paradigm of paganism, you would begin to worship leaders, you would worship tyrants, you would worship all these, um, all these people revered uh, in society. So that's my video for today or tonight. <laughs> Um, all paganism leads to tyranny. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.